Ooh, what's this? This is uh, not today's video. This is actually a nightmare that I've been working on for the last like four days. Um, got something printing over there for this, but yeah, that'll be like 28 hours before it's done. So in the meantime, we got to do something that I've been putting off for, for actually quite a while. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, or get lost in creativity. One class that I've been looking at is DIY product photography, style and shoot creative skills with Rachel and Daniel. As somebody that does product reviews on my YouTube channel from time to time, it's always good to know how to better take photos and videos of the products I'm talking about so they communicate better to my audience. If you're uncertain about what's next, creative challenges and productivity classes can be a great way to help you structure your time and set up achievement goals. At a time when so many important conversations are happening around the world, your voice is more essential than ever. Skillshare offers membership with meaning. Connect with the support of fellow creatives and enter a community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and after that, it's only $10 a month. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and make sure to check the link in the description below. So this is my main system. This is the, the PC I do all my gaming on, all my video editing, all my design work, pretty much everything you ever seen on the channel, at least after I built this, has come out of this PC. And I love it. This is the first custom hardline water-cooled PC that I'd ever built. And although it's not, not perfect, uh, I like it. And I have no issue with it other than uh, a little tiny thing that I, that I've noticed over, over the time. It's a 3950X, 2080 Ti inside of the O11 Dynamic XL from Lee & Lee, and it's got all custom, EK custom water cooling parts, including this ginormous front distribution plate that has the pump, the reservoir, and where all my runs come out of, which I do appreciate because it made doing uh, custom, custom hardline water cooling so much easier for somebody that's never done it before. But shortly after I put it together, I started to notice that some of the, some of the fittings on the front of it were starting to show like hairline cracks. And I was like, dang it, man. I thought for sure that I was careful. I didn't over tighten them, but I messed something up because we're cracking. And that's, that's a bummer because this, this, this distribution plate, not cheap. But after, as time went on, so I did what everybody would do. I just ignored it. And as time went on, I noticed that more and more fittings were showing cracks. And it got to the point where there's, there's plugs in this plate that came pre-installed from the factory that I never removed because I didn't need to that started to show cracks as well. So that's where I started to think, well, maybe it wasn't me that did it. Maybe it just, I just got unlucky. This was one of the first units that came from EK when they made the, or basically when the 011 Dynamic came out. And then this distribution plate was made for it. So I reached out to EK and I said, hey, I got issues with cracking on my, you know, my distribution plate. Have you seen this from anybody else? Uh, is there anything we can do to fix it? I had an idea of how I could repair it, but I didn't want to do it because my fear is that it's not leaking right now, but if I remove the fitting that has the cracks in it, then, well, there's no going back. But luckily for us, EK has sent me some replacement parts for this uh, distribution plate, and we're going to try to install them today. And that's also the reason why I was putting this off. That just doesn't sound fun at all. Does it remove all the, all this to put in some new plates? Well, we're going to do it. And then we're going to see if my idea for how I could have fixed these would have worked without the risk of never, ever being able to use this ever again. So now the fun part, I got to drain everything. So I'll be back with you when I get the, 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 the plate out. Oh boy.
Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that's over with. Uh, honestly, at first, looking at this, it looked a bit intimidating. One, I had to take it all back apart, and this is my first custom hardline build, and I'd never had it apart since I made it. But actually, after after doing it now, it's, it's really not that bad. Yeah, there's a lot of screws, there's some O-rings you gotta be careful of, but it's really just to unbolt and rebolt together and make sure you don't roll any O-rings and pinch anything, and you're good. Also, don't over tight stuff, because we know what happens then. But if you have cracks like this, I mean, it's, it's not really that hard of a fix. But now that we have it apart, we can look at them more closely because it's been a couple days now and things have dried off and they don't actually go all the way through the acrylic. So my fear is that they were going to let loose. Maybe maybe down the line somewhere they would have, but it doesn't look like they would have anytime soon because they're only about, oh, a mil or two down from the surface. Essentially, they just really didn't look that good in the long run but I'm, I'm glad it's all fixed up and everything's good. The hardest thing about the whole deal, to be honest with you, is the flow meter. The flow meter, it was the toughest because the pin that holds it is a press fit or an interference fit in the acrylic. So getting it out is tough. Uh, I recommend using some paper towels like I did, grab it with a pair of pliers. You don't wanna mar it up because you need it to be somewhat smooth so your flow meter can spin on it, pull it out. And then when you put it in, Make sure you tap it down a little bit. Not too tough, because you might crack something, but you want to make sure it's seated, because if not, when you put the two pieces together, the face of the flow meter will contact this face, and you might not get a good seal, and it might not spin. But other than that, there's really not much to it. It was a straightforward, simple process. And honestly, the hardest part was taking everything apart, putting it back together. This wasn't the hardest, it was the most annoying. But now that we got it apart, and the new ones in there, these are just basically uh, unusable now since I don't have the o-ring anymore because I had to transfer it over so we're going to try to see if the idea I originally had to fix it would work and what we're going to be using is this stuff this is weld on for it's made for acrylics it's basically if you've ever made or created fish tanks so basically when people make fish tanks out of acrylic they weld the acrylic together with this stuff weld on for uh, basically once you put this two pieces of acrylic together and you put weld on for between it it's not coming apart and my hope is using capillary action, we can get that weld on floor to go down inside the cracks here and hopefully close them up forever. I don't know if it'll work, but we have nothing to lose, so let's give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little bit in the threads and hope that it gets pulled down and hopefully my helping hands don't release. Just wanna drip in there. Yeah, it doesn't really look like it's gonna go down there, does it? Nope. Too tight of a crack. I was hoping that maybe it would get pulled down and then it would kind of clear up as the pieces got welded back together. It doesn't look like it's gonna be, we're gonna be so lucky. Well, that's all she wrote for uh, this distribution plate. Unless you guys have an idea what we can do with it. There's no seal anymore, so we can't really use it as a distribution plate, but if you have an idea, let me know. We can maybe turn it into something. And if you have cracks like this, hopefully they're not too deep and you can keep using your distribution plate because they're pretty pricey. It's, it would be a, a tragedy to throw it away. But hey, if you're seeing this video, at least you know that the PC is back up and running. We can put videos back out on the channel and we got a good one coming up. We're gonna do a build. We haven't done a build in a while. I actually have two builds planned for this uh, coming up. One of them requires me to buy a GPU, which is, uh, yeah. But this one doesn't require to buy a GPU. It's not gonna be a super high power build, but that's not the point. What we're gonna be trying to make here is like a small mini Minecraft server for me and my friends to play on and we're gonna be 3D printing a custom case for it, which should be really awesome. So get subscribed for that one. We'll see you in that video. We're back up in action. Till next time.